Hey, my name's Hamish. I'm an independent animator and today I'm going to show you how to make a multiplane camera uh, for cheap and on a tight budget. I know long intros on tutorials can be pretty annoying, so if you just want to jump straight into the build, just hit the pop-up button down the bottom. Otherwise, first I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown on what a multiplane camera is, uh, its history, what it does, how it works, and what you'll probably want from your budget version. What is a multiplane camera? A multiplane camera is essentially a glass bench with multiple layers that you use to give added dimension and depth to your cutout and cell animations. The camera is angled down, and looking through the transparent layers, it captures the animations made on the glass. Simple versions involve just two layers, the foreground on top, and the background on bottom. More advanced versions have four layers, foreground, contact plane where you animate your characters, overlay background, and lower background down the bottom. You can theoretically add as many layers as you want to make a really hardcore multiplane camera. But I'm more interested right now in the more conventional four layer version. History of the multiplane camera. The history of the multiplane camera goes way back to 1926 with one of the first feature animations ever, The Adventures of Prince Ahmed by Lotte Reiniger. She animated cutout stop motion puppets on a backlit glass bench, which I think she made by cutting a hole out of a dining table. You take your best dining table, cut a hole into it, put a glass plate over it, and over the glass plate some transparent paper. I don't think she used more than two layers at a time though, so it was more of a proto multiplane camera setup. Bertolt Bartosz, who collaborated with Reiniger, also made one of his films on a similar setup. The first true multiplane camera, which had four layers but a horizontal camera, was made by ex-Disney animator Ub Iwerks from Car Parts and he used it in a number of his Iwerks Studios cartoons. By the mid-1930s, the multiplane camera was being used for a number of different animations, including the Flesher Studios Cell 3D Miniature Hybrid or Stereo Optical Camera animations, which included Betty Boop and Popeye the Sailor cartoons. The multiplane camera really came into dominance with Disney's first feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Disney's version of the camera was invented by William Garrity and it involved a vertical moving camera shooting through seven layers of glass. They're pretty proud of it and even made a short documentary. The trick of the multiplane camera is movement. And rightly so, the animations they made that really pushed the formal aspects of the art form, even though animation at this point was still playing it pretty safe. The camera was used throughout the century to create a bunch of features for Disney, up until 1990 when it was replaced by digital capture processors, and it still used extensively today by animators who want to create handmade 2D animations. What do you want from a DIY I don't know about you, but I'm on a pretty tight budget, so I want it to be pretty cheap. I also want it to be pretty stable so it doesn't fall over or shift halfway through a shot. I want it to have four adjustable layers, and I want it to be able to be packed down and stored away when I'm not using it. So a build is going to involve a rectangular wooden scaffold with supports at the back so they won't cast shadows on the animations when lit, and the sides will be open to animate long strips of background for parallaxing on our side tracking shots. I did a bit of research, and a lot of multiplane camera builds utilize copy stand necks, which makes their cameras movable, but the cheapest one I could find was about $100, which is above my budget. So instead I'm going to put a tripod on some crates and invert its stems so the camera points down. The materials we need are 10 meters of wooden beams, which I go for about $26 at the local hardware store, 4 panes of glass measuring about 50.5 by 40.5 centimeters. I got the glass from local thrift shop photo frames, which I found to be way cheaper than from a glass shop, and the panes are really clear. Just make sure all your glass is the same size. I got them for $6 each, so that added up to about $24. 16 metal brackets that were about $0.65 cents each, a bunch of wooden screws, and 16 by 75 millimeter bolts to place the glass on, one roll of all-purpose bathroom mat, but you can just replace this with any sort of rubber. All up, these materials cost me $98.80, so we're on budget. So first we want to cut our four posts to the height you want. I'm going to keep it short and go with one meter, because I want my tripod to stand over it. Next, we need to mark and drill the holes for the bolts that will support each frame of glass. We want to be able to adjust the height of all the glass panes, 
So I'm going to create a hole every 4 centimeters, starting 20 centimeters from the bottom. Make sure all the holes are in the same place on all four posts, otherwise your glass won't be flat. Then we need to cut 8 cross beams. Make sure you measure the sides carefully as we need the glass to fit inside the frame. We want it to be about a centimeter of space from the frame on all sides of the glass. Now we're going to attach the cross beams with wood screws and brackets, making sure all joints are square. By this stage your multiplane bench should be taking shape. Test it for stability. If it's a little wobbly, it might need some more cross beams. Now we need to put rubber on the bolt ends so the glass doesn't scratch and it stays in place. I'm going to use a hot glue gun to stick the matting on the bolt heads. We're pretty much done. All you need to do is place the bolts where you need them and insert the glass panes. Now all you need to do is set up your camera on crates and position your lighting and you're pretty much ready to animate. There are a bunch of things you can do to improve your multiplane camera if you don't mind spending a bit of money, like adding a copy stand neck, adding more planes to the camera, or using thicker wood so it's more stable. One of the issues you might have with operating a multiplane camera is reflections on the glass layers. The best way to fix this is to shoot in a dark room with only your set lights on. Also, attach a matte black light shield made of black wrap or cardboard to your lens. Another tip is to angle your lighting low, almost horizontally. This will hopefully stop any hot spots reflecting off your glass. Some shots can be a bit tricky and will require a bit of time to set up your multiplane camera correctly. Well I hope that helped you make your own multiplane camera. Uh, let me know how it went for you. Uh, if you're into DIY weird or independent animation, come check out my website, um, undergroundanimation.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm.